China is producing its own chips. It's proven a self-reliance in technology that has not been seen before in the modern era. But some don't like it. The USA, in order to stymie China's innovation, has implemented yet another wave of trade restrictions on China. These aren't the same as sanctions. They hamper rather than help trade. They aren't negotiable, whereas technically sanctions are negotiable. If Cuba ceases to be communist, if Iran stops working with nuclear power, if Venezuela restructures their electric government and North Korea changes its system, all these sanctions should be eased. In other words, the USA wants its own way or no way. With China, though, it's not about sanctions. Although hundreds of them exist, it's about legislation. And the only way China can prevent the US from implementing them is to literally stop developing and go back to the 1980s. What the CHIPS bill has done is reckless and foolish, but more than that, it's a clear breach of World Trade Organization standards. Let's talk about those first. The World Trade Organization has guiding principles. The first is trade without discrimination. So while writing legislation to incentivize your own industry is great, specifically writing that the industry can't deal with one country, China, is not. That's discriminatory. Other guiding principles are freer trade through negotiation and predictability through binding agreements and transparency. So sanctions, trade barriers, tariffs, product bans, which have never been negotiated, are neither predictable nor transparent. Promoting fair competition is another, and it's absolutely clear that what the US has done to companies such as Huawei and 58 others that it's banned does not promote fair competition. And the CHIPS bill is not the first time. In 2021, the US created the Innovation and Competition Act, specifically with a view to blocking China's progress. Again, all outside World Trade Organization guidelines. China, on the other hand, has set out policies for cooperation with the United Nations, the Pacific Island nations, other neighboring and developing nations, and it's even written a white paper on international development cooperation in the new era. Always seeking cooperation. Now, I also said it was foolish and reckless. In 2011, the Wolf Amendment created a law preventing NASA working with China. So what did China do? In 2013, Chang'e er 3 touched down on the moon. And in 2019, they went again and returned with samples. In 2021, China's space station, Tiangong, was launched and is now fully operational. And China has also landed on Mars, proving without a shadow of a doubt that China can and will survive when it takes its own path to development. Even the New York Times, not normally China's greatest defender, concedes that China has leapt ahead in technology and is already creating the semiconductors that the USA has just started to block. Commercial quantities may be some way ahead, but the fact that the technology already exists proves China can and will prevail. And here's a really weird thing. If the US were honest with themselves, they'd probably concede that most manufactured products using chips come from China. China wants to buy more chips, but American companies can no longer sell them. Who benefits from that arrangement? Tsinghua University School of Engineering and their School of Computer Science have ousted MIT from the top spots over the last few years. And they have many more students. While US universities are enrolling fewer students, Chinese universities are enrolling more. This means that the future of China's technology and innovation is likely to see more graduates from better universities inside of China. China has proven time after time that it can compete on an uneven playing field. Bullies usually find that being the strongest player isn't going to work, especially when they want their own game and their own rules.